Hi everybody, welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to make my mother's recipe for homemade whole wheat bread. This recipe is very few ingredients, very inexpensive to make, especially if you grind your own wheat, but you don't have to. Not everybody has a wheat mill. I do because I make all my own bread. This recipe is handed down for generations. I don't know exactly how old it is, but my mother and grandmother and great-grandmother all made it. And I can remember no better smell in the world than coming home from school and smelling this bread baking in the oven. It's uh, There's my wheat mill over there. And that goes in there. I already ground my wheat, but you can buy it at the store in a bag. They sell five pound bags of whole wheat flour. In this recipe, I put a little bit of white flour in it to kind of make it just a little bit lighter, maybe a couple of cups. You'll discover with this recipe that the flour is not an exact measurement because it depends on your altitude where you live. It's more like the texture and consistency, which I will show you as we go along making this. I'm going to begin now, just I'm going to show you the, the ingredients that I'm going to be using. Now this is honey. You know what, if my mother didn't have honey, and she usually did, she substituted brown sugar and that worked too. And the recipe also calls for yeast, of course. Now I have a big jar of it because again, I make all my own bread and I buy this at a a discount store in a big container and I keep it in the refrigerator. A lot of yeast like this will keep a really long time in the refrigerator if you get it that way. And it's cheaper, it's way cheaper. I use molasses. And this is not black strep. That doesn't work. It's really strong. You need a mild molasses, which this is one. And then oil. Now this oil that I have here today is a very light olive oil. Normally I just use vegetable oil. But this is light and it, it doesn't it needs to be flavorless. That's the point with this. And then my whole wheat flour, my white flour, and my brown sugar. You will see that this makes two loaves, but it hardly has any fat in it, so it's really good for you. I'm not sure exactly how much it costs to make per loaf. When my mother did it, it was probably seven cents a loaf, but it's probably more now, but you can see these ingredients and it doesn't take a lot of any of them to make two loaves. It freezes really well. Let's get started. I've got my yeast here and, and my warm water, not hot. You actually could use cold, it just takes longer for the bread to rise. One tablespoon of yeast and it kind of gets softened up. And just as a little trick to help get the molasses and honey off the spoon. I do the, I do the oil first and then the rest of it just sort of falls off. So four tablespoons of oil, not very much. Just to get this, just to help this a little bit, I'm gonna whisk it in here so I won't do it. And then, I think I'm going to put the molasses in here so I don't have to scrape it out of there. You can do it either way. Two, only two tablespoons of molasses. And then here is my uh, honey. Two tablespoons of that. Okay. The only thing left is the salt, believe it or not, and one tablespoonful of salt. Can't forget that. All we have to do is mix the warm water oil in here. And if you zoom in, you can see it's just kind of a watery mixture. 
Doesn't look like much, but boy, is it good. I always make sure my kitchen is fairly clean before I start to bake. But now I estimate the flour. I don't do it exact. The recipe says about 11 cups of flour, but it depends on the altitude of where you live. So we go by texture, the way it looks. So I put, I just spoon it in, and I always put, like I think I said before, a couple of cups of white flour to make it a little lighter. So I'm just gonna mix this up, and I'll be right back. Mix this up, and you can see the dough is uh, we the dough is a little bit sticky, but it doesn't stick really bad to my finger. You want it to be moist and not dry. If it's dry, it'll be like a brick, and you don't want that. One of the extra great things about this bread recipe is it only raises in the pans once. It doesn't raise till double and then knock it down. So it's it's faster to make it. This is done. I'm going to now turn it out on my board and uh, knead it just a little bit and form it into loaves. It's time to form it into loaves right now. I'm ready to put this out on the board. Uh, just a little bit, I've sprayed my pans. This is, um, this is a plastic scraper. I love it for getting all the bread out. Looks like some of the molasses didn't get totally mixed in, but that's okay because the most important thing is when I'm forming it into lettuce. Okay, so this is our dough. Sprinkle it with a little bit of flour. That's what I'm doing, just forming it into a loaf. Pop it in here. I know, it seems like it should be doubling in size, doesn't it? But we don't do that with this recipe. And you let it raise only for about 20 or 30 minutes till it gets maybe an inch above the pans. And it's ready to go in. See, it isn't really sticky but I can feel, when I feel it, it's kind of moist. Okay, then we form it into a little loaf, and there we go. We let it raise till it's about one inch above the pants. Okay, our bread has risen. You can see it's just a little bit above the pans, and I put it on a 350 degree oven, And I would guess this uh, this took about 30 minutes in uh, my kitchen to raise. But it just it needs to look like this rather than focus on the time. It's approximately this, but you've got to get it to be about like this. So I'm just going to pop these in the oven. And we're going to sit there for 45 minutes, and then we're going to have great whole wheat bread. like my bread is done. Yep. You get out of the oven. See here I have some other bread. I've been baking a lot today. I did a batch of white bread too. So I'm gonna have a freezer full. 
and you, you grease the pan so it comes out really easily. Put it on a cooling rack and let it cool. Then we're gonna have fresh bread tonight.